Hi guys, so there's been some requests about making a uh, what's in my iPhone video, so I'm gonna be doing that today. So here is my iPhone. So we'll break the sound into four parts. Part one is productivity, and probably the app that I use the most is gonna be the calendar app. I have used some third party calendar apps, but I find this the native app to be it's just the simplest one to use. So I've linked it to my Gmail, so it just basically shows everything that I need. So I have all my school schedule on my calendar app, and that is where I go to check all the locations and times of where I need to be. Next is email. It's kind of boring, but I just use the regular Outlook for my school. Um, my school and hospital recently made the change to Outlook, so that's what I've been using. And I use the Gmail app for my personal Gmail use. Another productivity app that I use is called Sleep Cycle. Basically, this kind of just tracks my sleep and it also acts as an alarm. So it'll sort of gently wake you up when you're the least asleep. So when your sleep isn't as deep, it'll, um, it'll wake me up then. Lastly, the last productivity app, it's not technically productivity, but an app that I like to use is Withings, where I keep track of all my sleep and the steps that I take every day. I've talked about this app a bunch of times. It links with my watch, um, so I can see everything um, about how active I am throughout the day in this app. The next set of apps is my med school apps. So during my rotations, I've been using a couple apps to look up a lot of drugs, because obviously there's just a ton of drugs that you, you learn it in school, but when you come to the hospital, people are using different names, people are using um, generic names or the brand names. So a lot of times you're just looking up um, what they're talking about. So the two apps that I've been using to look up drugs are called Lexicomp um, and Micromedics. So you can see uh, for Micromedics, you can just start to write a drug and a bunch of them um, will come up. And you can look up the dosing indications, contraindications, and everything like that. Um, for Lexicomp, I think it has a little more data. So let's say I wanted to look up Clonopin. You can look up, it's pretty much the same information. Um, but I think in Lexicomp, there's uh, something you can do where you can list all the, all the drugs and it'll analyze to see if there's any interactions or contraindications or anything like that so that's really helpful um, depending on the institution that you're in you'll have access to either one of them so um, I think they're both excellent apps for my very limited use so you can just use um, whatever you guys have access to some of the other like medical apps that I've been using is up to date and agile MD um, to be honest, I haven't had that much experience using these two either because I've only done my sec rotation so far. So there's not a lot of things that you're looking up in um, either of these apps. But just to give you guys an example, hyponatremia, if you were to look it up, um, there's a bunch of information like causes, treatment, hyponatremia in children, and you can see all these information. Um, so it's really good to read up on a patient before you go talk to the patient. So if you're not like Googling and Wikipediaing something, but you can just um, look up the relevant information that you need. Same thing with Agile MD. You can also do hypotremia, and it looks like there's like a flow chart that you can follow. So definitely a ton of information, and it's very, very, very helpful. Um, some of the other educational medical apps that I'm using or that I've been using are um, Firecracker. Obviously, I've talked about that a lot. Especially now that I'm on the on the floor, hospital floor, and sometimes I'll just have random like couple minutes of downtime. Um, Firecracker is really good to just kind of go through these like short flashcard information, and so you're not like you're sort of just killing time, but you're um, <clears throat> learning something at the same time. So you can do um, something like that. Um, I guess same concept as Anki, if you have an Anki deck made that is appropriate to what you want to be learning, you can also do that. All these cards that I use for a step are still here. A couple good educational medical apps that you guys want to check out just for fun. Um, one of them is the Lippmann Sound Builder and this is very good for practicing your murmur um, listening skills. So let's say mitral stenosis is severe. First, you can read about it. All the information is here. The second will have 
um, sort of like what it sounds like. If you can hear it. Usually you can hear it. You can also see sort of the phonocardiogram or the audiogram of what, what it's supposed to sound like. And then you can see like a visual representation of this mitral stenosis. So this is very good um, app for learning um, some of the heart sounds. Another good app to have on your phone is a CDC vaccine schedule. So um, if you're talking to someone, it's a very good practice to always ask them um, if they got all their vaccinations. So this app will tell you the CDC, CDC recommendation of um, vaccination schedule. So for a doll, you can see from 19 to 21, these are the vaccines that you um, either need to get or are recommended to get. So that's all the medically relevant or medically related apps that I have. Next category is social media. So obviously Instagram is something that I've been using. Um, so if you guys aren't following me, definitely follow me at the Strive to Fit on Instagram. Um, I love reading all your comments and input on Instagram. Um, another app that I've been trying to use a little more often is Snapchat. <clears throat> so um, that's my code if you guys ever want to use it and add me and send me messages or ask me questions, that's a good way to do that. Um, some of the other messenger apps, I use Kakao Talk, that's, um, that's like a messenger app that a lot of Koreans use, so I use that to talk to my family members mostly. Um, I also use GroupMe and a little less, I use um, WhatsApp and Facebook Messenger and Skype and some of those other messenger apps. Next category is music and podcast. For the music, I mostly use Spotify. At some point, it became kind of hard to manage all my music on my computer because, I don't know, it just like wasn't showing up. Sometimes I wouldn't put everything that I own into my phone because there's no room. Um, so I started using Spotify a little more. I think the student subscription is actually pretty affordable. So I have the Spotify Pro. Um, so that there's no ads and I, I find it to be a pretty good app for listening to music. And another app that I use is Downcast and this is where I listen to all my podcasts. So some of the podcasts that I listen to regularly are Freakonomics, The Moth, Only Human, Radio Lab, Serial is very good if you haven't listened to it, This American Life and TED Radio Hour. Those are all um, very good podcasts. And as for games, I don't really play games on my phone, um, but I do have some of them um, here, like Agario, Trivia Crack, some of them like I'll play like once in a while, but I'm not really like a phone game player. Um, mostly if I have some downtime, I'm scrolling through social media or doing questions on my Firecracker app. So that's how I spend my time on my phone. So that's generally, that's, that's pretty much it for my phone. That's that was like a pretty quick tour of what's in my phone. I hope you guys found it helpful or entertaining or um, got whatever you wanted out of it. Um, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Okay, so I am ready to make the next video, which is going to be on what's in my iPhone. Hey guys, so all the filming is done for the day, at least I think, and I'm going to head to gym now.